Okay, so so starting with this question, read it says the diagrams below are two specialized cells in plants and humans. Study them carefully and answer the questions that follow. So we have A here and we have B here. So identify the specialized cells labeled A and B. So A is the one in the plant and B is the one in the animal. A is called root hair cells. Root hair cells. Or the root hair cell. And then the B is the sperm cell. The second question says, state the function of each of the cells labeled A and B above. The function of A is to absorb water and nutrients from the soil. And the function of B it's adapted to um, fertilizing the female gamete, which is the egg. Then the III is asking us to label the parts, first of all, of A. So I is a vacuum. Vacuum is the biggest organelle in the plant cell. Then II is the cytoplasm. III is the nucleus, which controls activities of the cell. And then IV is the mitochondrion, which is the site for um, respiration or that produces energy. So the IV is asking us to label the parts of B. So X is the head and Y is the tail. And lastly, state one way A and B is each adapted to its function. So how is A adapted to its function? Now, it is very thin, which helps to allow water and nutrients to penetrate. And then B is also streamlined to be able to swim. And then to add to it, it has a tail to be able to swim towards the egg. Click on the image by my channel name to see more videos that I make. The diagram below labeled X and Y shows the structure of two molecules. Study the diagrams below carefully and answer the questions that follow. So I is asking us to identify the molecules labeled S and Y. So the molecule in X is sodium chloride and ACL. And the molecule in Y is hydrogen gas. H2. Then II. Name the atoms that form each of the molecule labeled X and Y. So the atoms that make up X is sodium and chlorine. And the atoms that make up Y is hydrogen and hydrogen. So two atoms of hydrogen. III. Name the interatomic bond between X and Y. The interatomic bond between X is ionic bond or electrovalent bond. And the interatomic bond between Hydrogen gas is covalent bond. Ivan, describe how the interatomic bonds in X are formed. For ionic or electrovalent bonds, they are formed when there is a complete transfer of electrons from the electropositive atom to the electronegative atom. The electronegative atom has an affinity to accept electrons. So the electropositive, which will form a cation, would release the electron to the electronegative. So the electropositive would have a stable electron configuration because it has transferred one of its electrons, in this case, which is the sodium, which has one electron on the outermost shell, to chlorine, which has seven electrons on the outermost shell and has an affinity for one. So after the bond is formed, both of the atoms would now have a stable electron configuration. That is, their outermost shell will fully float. Now, with the vein, describe how interatomic bonds in Y are formed. With covalent bonds, they are formed when there is sharing of electrons. So, this hydrogen atom had one electron, this hydrogen atom also had one electron. So, we just brought the electrons closer together to form a stable electron configuration. To realize that the two electrons here are being shared so they all have two electrons on the outer shell. The diagram below is an electronic circuit for charging and discharging a capacitor. Study the diagram carefully and answer questions that follow. It goes to enlarge for us to see very well. I think it's large enough. So the first question is identify the components labeled I, 
I, I, I, I, I, I, I, I, I, I, I, I, so the first one here is the battery or the direct current power source. The I, I is a resistor. The I, I, I is an ammeter. The I, V is a capacitor. The V is a voltmeter. And the V, I is the wire. The next question is, state the function of I, 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 V, V, and V, I. So, starting with the first one, which is a battery, it provides electrical energy required to charge the capacitor. And the I, I, which is a resistor, limits the current flow in the circuit. Then the I, 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 which is the ammeter, measures the current flow into the circuit. I mean is a capacitor which stores electric charges in an electric field. Then V, which is a voltmeter, it measures the voltage across the capacitor. Then the VI, which is the wire, is the conductor or it is the path through which the electrical energy flows. Then III, it says name and explain the process in IV when the switch is on position one. So when the switch is on position one, what is actually going to happen? So with science, always know that the keywords should be used. When you're talking about capacitors, definitely you are supposed to be mentioning charging and discharging. So to answer the III, which is when the switch is on position one, we see that when the switch is in position one, the circuit is completed. So current will flow from the battery through the ammeter or through the resistor through the ammeter as the capacitor charges the voltage across it increases until it reaches the voltage of the battery now during this process the current gradually decreases as the capacitor accumulates charges now the IV is this name and explain the process in IV when the switch is on position 2 now when the switch is on position 2 it's actually discharging so when the switch is on position to as I've done, the circuit path is changed. So we bypass the battery and allow the capacitor to discharge to the resistor and the ammeter. The stored energy in the capacitor is released, causing the current to flow through the circuit until the capacitor is fully discharged. The voltage across the capacitor decreases to zero during the process or during this process. Then we have the next question here. It says that the diagrams below illustrate some agricultural tools. Send them carefully and answer the questions that follow. So we have A to F. So A is a hand trowel, B is a wheelbarrow, C is an axe, D is watering can, E is a sickle, and F is a knapsack sprayer. The II is asking us to state the use of each tool labeled A to F. So A is used for fetching soil. As the garden soil, B is used for transporting maybe debris from the farm to be disposed. Then C is used for cutting branches of trees. D is used for watering. E is used for harvesting grass or rice. F is used for spraying insecticides or maybe fertilizers onto crops. Then the I I I. Just give one way of maintaining the tools above. One way. To maintain all these tools that will work for each of them clean and store them after use click on the image by my channel to see more videos that i make